can I interest you in some mealyworms? Uh, consider these gateway bugs. Barclays is estimating that insect protein will be an eight billion dollar market by 2030. Why? It takes so much less land and water to get the same amount of protein out of insects than it does for traditional animals. Plus, you get more fiber. You're eating a skeleton. Oh my God, nutty. Look, two billion people already eat bugs on this planet. They're getting cultural acceptance here. It's taking a while. This one is our peanut butter and blueberry. Now, Ann Carlson has figured out an easier way to market growth, bug-based dog food called Jiminy. Sales grew 70% this year now in the millions of dollars. Carlson says dogs eat 32 billion pounds of protein a year. And the sustainability proposition around bugs appeals to pet-loving millennials. One of the key reasons I got into this is my daughter, she's a millennial, and she's said she might not want to have children because she's worried about the world, what the world is going to be like. 80% of the biomass of the planet is, you know, made out of insects. Doesn't make any sense that we're not tapping into that. Now, Monica Martinez created Don Poguito Insect Snacks for Humans. She sells 25,000 bags. The biggest challenge is... <laughs> To know if the market is ready or no, um, access to capital too, they still need a lot of money to be um, on education. Now, some people think Beyond Meat and Impossible Foods has raised the profile of other alternative proteins. Monica Martinez, by the way, this is her bug farm. She's not so sure. She thinks some people would rather still kill a plant than a bug. All right, Jane, we have some here on set. We're going to have some. How many bugs do we think you've eaten in the course of reporting this story? Um, uh, more, than, uh, more than I should, oh, wow. including the dog oh, yeah. I mean, I ate dog food. Yeah. That's okay. What do you think? Uh, what, what are we, Look, which ones are we going to have? We got we got this in here for freshness, which is, this is crickets. Yeah. We've and got dark chocolate crickets and. What is that? Um, Spicy bugitos. They're it they look yeah, like Yeah, I guess really it's worms. a medley. It's, it's mixed with I'll, I'll one try. Of the bugitos. You want the bugito? Let's do this. It's, it's like, I mean, it's a good sustainability argument, right, Jane? We've had John Chambers on before to talk about Crunchy. this. I've never done this Crunchy. before. Oh, it actually tastes pretty good. Okay, so Jane, question for you. What does it actually take to prepare these different bugs for human consumption? All right, so here's the deal. They put them to sleep uh, with the cold, and then they freeze them, so they die painlessly if they're even sentient, and that there's a whole debate about that. Uh, the crickets are then washed and then roasted. Uh, mealy worms are actually have a natural wash. antibiotic in them, and they're now sleeping. How do you wash a cricket, Jane? Yeah. Like a little washcloth? Or... Well, I wish we had time for that answer, though. Jane. It's actually not bad. It's no. not bad at the all. The crickets are particularly yeah. tasty. Uh, Jeff Goldblum, 800, please. My study of uh, different styles uh, of barbecue grilling led me to an eco-sustainable source of protein. These grillable insects with the appropriate scientific family name of Grillidae. They eating bugs too over there? Oh boy. I don't know about this. That is a lot. Oh, how about these bad boys? This bad boy. This is cream, man. Not terrible at all. Yeah. This, how about these bad boys? Small ones. Little babies. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Oh, this is nice. Oh yeah, that's actually not bad. Yeah. I'm very surprised, I'm very happy, I'm eating bugs, but it doesn't taste bad at all. <laughs> oh baby. I was expecting way worse. It's not bad.
Oh baby. Well, proponents of insect protein hope that Gen Z and millennials will eventually think, of course we eat insects. What's the big deal about that? I mean, you put chocolate on anything, and it's good. Am I right? I don't know, Jane. You ate a lot of bugs. I guess I'll give it a try. Not bad. So locusts, the best way I've found to cook them is actually to pan fry them. So obviously, I like to enhance the flavor of the locust. And what better than honey and a little bit of chili, and also fry it in a little bit, little bit of butter as well. The first thing you'll taste will be this nice honey flavor with a little bit of heat from the cayenne pepper. And when you start to eat them a little bit, you'll get the flavor of the locusts that come through. And they're really nice and almost meaty, almost like a prawn. I mean, effectively, they are basically a land prawn. You see, in Africa, kids go to school with strings of locusts, you know, and that's their, that's their lunch. And I think, yeah, as a, as a high-protein snack to eat on the fly, I think locusts would be brilliant. With the locusts, pull the legs off. They can get stuck in the throat otherwise, OK? <laughs> Ants have a tart or sour taste. Some people taste that right away, some people don't. I think it's just all a matter of taste buds, but that's why we put it on the stick with the marshmallow fluff so it's sweet, salty, and crunchy, so that it's not overpowering. But after they eat it, they do enjoy it. Got a sweet taste. to try bugs. They're pretty good. They're not bad. It's different. A little salty. A little bland. I only had one little one and it was way saltier than I expected it to be. So I'm a little nervous that this is going to be like a salt explosion. I was a former banker and I said, you know what? I eat jerky every single day. I love jerky, why not? And uh, almost eight years later, here we are still selling jerky and we've expanded into the bugs. We've got nuts, we've got hot sauces. So we kind of just sell whatever anyone asks for. We always say we have everything Walmart doesn't have. It's like kind of like beef jerky. I just, I love it. It's my fire in life, selling meat and nuts, now bugs. It's just a passion that we have to find something new and exciting and make different things and make people happy.
มแมลงมันไม่ใช่สิ่งที่น่ากลัวไม่ใช่สิ่งที่น่าขยักขยงแต่เพียงแค่ว่าเราเปิดใจเปิดใจรับเข้ามาลองชิมลองได้สัมผัสดูทั่วโลกตอนนี้ก็ยอมรับมแมลงมากขึ้นโดยเฉพาะประเทศไทยไทยเองก็ทานมแมลงกันตั้งแต่รุ่นปู่รุ่นย่ามาตลอดกินนะคะจะอยู่ที่ประมาณ15ค่ะทานนะค่ะก็เริ่มทานแมลงมาค่ะก็เรื่อยๆเหมือนกันตามวาระและโอกาสค่ะUh, this person asked me, "So what do you do?" And I say, "Well, I I grow insects for food." k a t r i n a is an industrial designer who wants to start a food revolution with this, the world's first desktop worm farm. It grows up to a half a kilogram of worms a week in a controlled microclimate, then harvests them with the push of a button. The beetles lay eggs in there, and they grow into worms. Uh, and and then we came up with a separation system. Which separates the worms from food remains, and so you can harvest really the fresh worms in order to eat as a meat alternative. Mealworms have the protein content of beef, but without the environmental footprint. And here in Asia, people have been eating bugs for centuries. Across Europe and the U.S., insect farmers have been scaling up to meet rising global demand. But Katrina is targeting individuals who want to know where their bugs came from. As soon as I understood the process of growing them. I really started to see it as a food source and not as something strange and new. The hive costs around 650 U.S. dollars. Katrina says the company already has a thousand customers in the U.S., Europe, and China. But many people still can't overcome the itch factor. So insects might still have a long way to crawl before they end up on plates in most kitchens.